Hello everyone, this is Andrew again, and now we're going to discuss PLC Programming Training Part 21. Okay, let's start. Exercise 1. Create a PLC program given the following conditions. You have 3 lamps and 1 analog generator, 1 to 5 volts DC. If the analog value is more than 25%, lamp 1 will turn on. If the analog value is more than 50%, Lamp 2 will turn on. If the analog value is more than 75%, Lamp 3 will turn on. If the analog value is at 100%, all the lamp will blink, 1 second on, 1 second off. The number of bits is 8. Upper range value is 100%. Lower range value is 0%. If you are not yet familiar about this one, it's better for you to watch my previous video about instrumentation and controls part 1 and part 2. I'm also recommending you to watch my previous video about PLC command for data processing and my previous tutorials about uh, PLC programming. Okay, let's have our demonstration. As you can see here. The analog value is more than 25%. Now let's increase the analog value. Now it is more than 50%. That's why lamp 2 is now turned on. And now it is more than 75%. Now let's make it 100%. As you can see here, all the lamp is blinking because the value of the analog is at 100%. Now let's try to decrease the value of the analog. And as you can see here, Lamp 1, Lamp 2, and Lamp 3 will turn on depending on the value of the analog signal here. Okay, please pause this video and try to solve it by yourself. Then after that, you can resume this video so that you can compare your answer to my answer. Okay, let's continue. First thing that we need to do is to find the span. And to find the span, you need to get the difference between upper range value and the lower range value, which is 100% and 0%. Now we have a span of 100%. Next, we need to find the resolution, which is equivalent to 2 raised to number of bits. Now we have the resolution of 2 raised to 8 because we have 8 bits. We have our resolution of 256. Okay, next, we need to find the equivalent resolution given the value of the voltage. If we have 0%, we have a resolution of 0. If we have 100%, we have the upper range value of 255. But from our computation while ago, we have 256. But now we have 255. Why is that? Because including 0, we have 256 bits and now we're looking for the equivalent resolution at 25% voltage and this is the formula to find the equivalent value of 25% by using algebra we can have our resolution of 63.75 but as we know from our previous lesson resolution doesn't have any decimal place that's why we need to round it down now let's find the equivalent value for 50 percent by using your algebra again we will come up with the value of 127.5 but also we need to round it down next we need to find the value at 
by using your algebra again, you will come up with a value of 191.25. And we need also to round it down. And after that, we can come up with our program here. As you can see here, we have a comparison. If 63 is less than the 1000, which is the address of the analog here, 63 is 25%. Now, if this condition is satisfied, Y0 will turn on. And the same with the other values. As you can see here, the value of the analog, which is the 1000, is more than 25%. The condition is satisfied. That's why Y0 is on. Now the analog value is now more than 50%. This condition is satisfied. That's why Y1 is turned on. And now here, the analog value is more than 75%. That's why Y2 turns on. And as you can see here, the value of the analog signal is 100%. This condition here is satisfied. That will make T0 to activate after one second. And when T0 is activated, the normally open contact of T0 here will be closed. And the normally closed contact of T0 here will be open that will make y0 y1 and y2 to turn off and because of this one t1 will be activated after one second and because t1 is activated the normally closed contact of t1 here will be open that will make t0 to turn off and because of that the normally closed contact of t0 here will go back to its initial state and because T0 here is off, T1 will be deactivated. And as you can see here, the cycle will just repeat. And as we reduce the value of the analog signal, the lamp will turn off. Okay, let's have our simulation. Okay, that's it. Now let's go to our next exercise. Okay, before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please click the notification bell to notify you for new video. Don't forget to like and share our videos. Please like our Facebook page. And click see first to notify you for new posts. If you like this video, please put a comment nice below. Exercise 2. Edit a program from episode 7, exercise 2. The original sequence for this episode is lamp 1 will turn on for 1 second. Then after that, lamp 2 will turn on for 1 second. Then after that, lamp 3 will turn on for 1 second. Then the cycle will just repeat. But for the device sequence, lamp 1 will turn on for 1 second. Lamp 2 will turn on for 1 second. Lamp 3 will turn on for 1 second. But instead of going back here, Lamp 2 must turn on first before it goes back here. And please take note that don't create a program. You need to edit the current program to change the sequence. Let's analyze the original program. Now, when we press PB1, as you can see here, X0 is energized, 
and that will make M0 to turn on and because there is a latching here M0 will not turn off even if PB1 is released and because M0 here is energized it will make Y0 to turn on and timer 0 will turn on after 1 second then after timer 1 is activated the normally closed contact of T0 here will be open that will make Y0 to turn off and the normally open contact of T0 here will be closed that will make Y1 to turn on and that will make T1 to activate after 1 second and because T1 is activated now the normally closed contact of T1 here will be open that will make Y1 to turn off and the normally open contact of T1 here will be closed that will make Y2 turn on and T2 will be activated after 1 second and because T2 is activated the normally closed contact of T2 here will be open that will make timer 0 timer 1 and timer 2 here to turn off and because all the timer is off the normally closed contact of all the timer will go back to its initial state and as you can see here Y0 will turn on again and the cycle will just repeat if we press PB2 it will energize X1 that will make M0 to turn off and because M0 will turn off this one will not energize anymore and the cycle will not repeat anymore okay let's have our simulation okay that's it now this will be the revised sequence and let's have our demonstration let's press PB1 now I want you to post this video and try to solve it by yourself then after that you can resume this video so that you can compare your answer to my answer okay let's continue this is the original program and this will be the device program the highlighted part here is the edited part of the program as you can see here t2 is replaced by t3 and now we have t2 here we don't have t2 on our original program and here we also add the normally close contact of t2 and we add another rung okay let's have our program analysis let's press PB1 when PB1 is pressed X0 will be energized and that will cause M0 to turn on and because there is a latching here M0 will not turn off even if X0 is not energized anymore and because M0 is on, it will make Y0 to turn on. And timer 0 will be activated after 1 second. And because T0 is activated, the normally closed contact of T0 here will be open. That will make Y0 to turn off. And the normally open contact of T0 here will be closed. That will make Y1 to turn on. And because of that, T1 will be activated after 1 second. And now because T1 is activated, the normally closed contact of T1 here will be open. That will make Y1 to turn off. And the normally open contact of T1 here will be closed. That will make Y2 to turn on. 
and T2 here will be activated after one second. And because T2 here is activated, the normally closed contact of T2 here will be open. That will make Y2 to turn off. The normally open contact of T2 here will be closed. That will make Y1 to turn on. The contact of T2 here will activate T3 after one second. And as you can see here, because T2 is activated, the normally closed contact of T2 here will be open. That will make T0, T1, T2, and T3 to turn off. And because all the timer is off, all the normally closed contact will go back to its initial state. And the cycle will just repeat. The cycle will only stop if X1 here is energized and that is by pressing PB2. And because we press PB2, X1 here will be open. That will make M0 to turn off. And because M0 here is off, Y0 will not turn on anymore. Okay, let's have our simulation. Let's press PB1. 